Barnegat. The word has weight. What she lacks in depth, she makes up for in distance. 42 miles of beautiful brackish water stretching from Bayhead in the north to Little Egg Harbor in the south. Millions cross over in hopes of reaching seaside, beach haven, the ocean. But those in the know choose to stop at her mucky shores. It makes me think of a place that involves a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Water butters and fishing and crabbing and, and sailing. But it also means, you know, people back in the pines enjoying uh, the, the, the source of the water in Barnegat Bay, uh, valuing the streams that, that feed the bay. The bay is a sort of a report card on what's going on on the land around it. And if the bay is in good, clean shape, then that tends to mean that the people around the bay are in harmony with nature. The watershed is a wonderful place to explore. The Barnegat Bay watershed is all the land that when it rains, it drains into Barnegat Bay. There are 19 creeks and rivers that drain into Barnegat Bay. They start out in the headwaters near the middle of New Jersey. It's called the Divide. Water on the other side goes into the Delaware River. All this water drains into Barnegat Bay. Some areas west of the bay are challenged by increased development. Forest and fields are rapidly being ousted by homes, roadways, and businesses. Barnegat Bay Watershed encompasses 11 sub-watersheds. Tributaries and rivers pump like capillaries into the heart of the bay. All of what happens in the Barnegat Bay Watershed affects the bay. All the road construction, all the debris, people littering. We think nothing of roofs of hundreds of houses and driveways and sidewalks and curbs. So all of that water can't go into the ground. These impervious surfaces limit the filtration of water, and runoff pushes pollutants into nearby storm drains, and they are transported unfiltered directly into the bay. Lawns are a big problem. Pesticides are a problem. Oils from highways, pet waste. If you get an inch of rain, you'll have the river rise a foot. All of that is runoff and all of that carries with it any contaminants that could come into it. Runoff, filled with nitrogen and phosphorus, creates algae blooms in the bay. These blooms suck up life-supporting oxygen, stressing and even killing fish and shellfish. Ocean County originally was one giant water filter. There was literally no such thing as stormwater runoff in Ocean County. A raindrop would fall, it would hit the ground, and it would keep on falling because Ocean County didn't have glaciation, it's all just sandy soil. And that sand purified every drop of rain.
The natural state of the watershed is for creeks and rivers to be lined with forest, such as Atlantic white cedar. These trees provide a multitude of service. They protect the land from flooding, filter out pollutants, and provide habitats for insects, birds, and plants. Unfortunately, these forests are disappearing due to overpopulation of deer, rampant wildfires, and overdevelopment. White cedar can't live in salty conditions, so rising sea levels moving brackish water further upstream means the demise of these great trees. Atlantic white cedar is just about the most valuable tree in New Jersey. It's straight grained, it's light, it grows in the swamp so it doesn't rot, and the trees were logged out. There's almost no pristine forest. This is second or third growth. Two of the sub-watersheds provide an eye-opening comparison of the difference in water quality and the health of the system when human activity is present. Cedar Creek, the headwaters are forested. It's usually lined mostly with Atlantic white cedar with some pitch pines. The land is publicly owned. There are no homes or houses along the stream. You have Double Trouble State Park. You have Ocean County natural lands, you have county parks, and you have municipal parks all along the stream. So the quality is much better than it would be on some of the other streams. But it's a beautiful trip. You can spend all day without seeing another soul. Cedar Creek, called Clear Creek to early settlers. The water quality was impressive enough to be kegged and placed on sailing ships. Cedar roots lining its shores dictate its beautiful amber color. Even today, 90% of the creek is forested. The creek provides us with every type of wetland. Atlantic white cedar swamps, cranberry bogs rich in accumulated vegetation, and salt marshes stretching out to the coast. This nearly 55 mile sub watershed is home to many unique animals and plant species. Cedar Creek is truly a wonder of the watershed. At a whopping 124 square miles of drainage area, the Toms River sub-watershed is the largest of the Barnegat Bay system. Unlike Cedar Creek, early settlers populated the shores of the Toms River. At the time, a large inlet called Cranberry Inlet, located in the area now known as Ortley Beach, served as a gateway for ships to enter, promoting industry and recreation. While the headwaters are forested, they're mostly hardwood swamps. The native Atlantic white cedar disappearing years ago due to overharvesting. As you head southeast, human activity has diminished fresh and saltwater marshes. This sub-watershed is better suited for human activity on the surface than immersion below. Well, Tom's River is the largest stream that empties into Barnegat Bay. It's huge. It has 12 or 13 tributaries that go into it. And there's all kinds of different land uses in that watershed. There's a military base. There's Collier's Mills, which is a fish and wildlife area. There's chicken farms. There are a number of cranberry farms, gravel mines. There are a whole number of senior developments with lawns, sprinklers, hotels, nursing homes, you have the golf courses, shopping centers, then you're going to come to marinas, to places where the stream has been dredged out, bulkheaded, channelized. And then once you get to the bay, you have bridges across the bay, people and jet skis, sailboats, power boats. The river is really used for recreation and in some cases transportation. Unlike Cedar Creek, the Toms River watershed has seen growing development for centuries, the cost of which has been a decline in water quality. Don't want to see the development pressure. It has come. They wanted to build a jet port, and they said we could pave right over the pine trees and build a jet port out here. 
north of here is the Forked River Mountain Wilderness Area. It's the largest roadless area left in New Jersey. They were going to build houses out there. And now it's bought by the county, and it's a wilderness area. Those kinds of things are important. Not only buy the land, but manage it. If you let it go, I mean, all the cedars could be wiped out in a forest fire and nobody's replanting them. No more cedars. You have off-road vehicles and dirt bikes everywhere. How do you control them? Now the Ocean County Sheriff's Office is involved in helping to control that. So there's been a lot more uh, protection in place. There's been way more than I ever thought in the way of acquired land. And I think we're well over 15,000 acres that we protected. More development, more impervious surfaces, means greater challenges to maintaining water quality. We can't erase the development that has come before, but we can protect the watershed moving forward. We want to make people aware of impacts of their activities and just to use best management practices in everything that you do in the watershed. Just live that lifestyle. Although only a few miles apart, these two sub-watersheds give us a clear picture of the effects of human activity on water quality in Barnegat Bay. Well, the mouth of the stream or the estuary where the fresh water meets the salt in Cedar Creek, the quality is very good. In Tom's River, you have a tributary right there along Swamp Creek. That's the worst tributary of any stream that goes into Barnegat Bay. So that needs to get remedied fast. I'm trying to work on the golf course that's in the very headwaters. How can we protect that headwaters with a golf course? I don't know. We do have them putting a buffer around the pond that starts the stream. Start, a start, not necessarily a finish. But Tom Server's got his issues. You are in the watershed, everything you do does affect the bay. You can't say, I don't live in a watershed because wherever you live, you're in a watershed. The bay has been patient. She has provided her resource and refuge. Meanwhile, for over 50 years, we have engineered, erected, extracted. There is a balance. We are teetering. Nature will have her reckoning.